Every day I wake up afraid of failure, and I know a lot of you do too. Hi everyone, I'm Farah Sheikh, and I'm honored to share my experience and my humble story on how my fear of failure, mixed with my stubbornness, helped me achieve things I can only dream of. At a young age, I was very stubborn. I was very hard-headed, and my family can definitely attest to this. Uh, but what I didn't know is that this aspect of my personality, if I focused on and used to my advantage, would be my greatest ally in helping me achieve things that I didn't think would be possible. And I think the first time I realized that I had this thing in me where proving negative assumptions from people wrong would work tenfold and is greatly motivating and greatly satisfying at the same time. When I first started working in Kuwait, uh, it was my first job, my first full-time job. And I was excited, naturally. And I remember I was faced with a lot of resistance from my peers. They openly expressed that I couldn't do the job and I would last six months. And I remember feeling very disappointed, but at the same time, I felt this urge to prove them wrong. And this motivated me to work super hard to uh, achieve that goal. And I did. And I got a promotion eight months later. This is where I found that I can apply myself tremendously at work and really achieve things that I didn't even think I could do. And I didn't even have planned. Uh, honestly. So as I transitioned in my career, I um, started working in an industry that was predominantly held by men or made up of men. As I grew and took on more responsibilities and started leading a team, I was filling the shoes of older men. And I saw it as a challenge, as a personal challenge, to fill these shoes and get the job done, especially that I started at a young age and started leading a team at a young age. I think I was 26 at the time. But uh, what I didn't know or what I didn't consider, now looking back at it, I think I overwhelmed myself and put too much pressure where I was constantly uh, being driven by myself, not by anybody else that I caused my own burnout. As time went on and my responsibilities grew, uh, I grew in my career and in my role, uh, the pressures and the fear of failures grew with me and I didn't know how to balance it. I didn't know how to steer it. I wanted to prove to myself that I could do it but I think I caused my own burnout because I was constantly on. I was seeking a challenge in everything and I didn't have balance. I did not have balance between my professional life and my personal life and there was something missing. So along came in my second passion in life, hiking and climbing. Uh, it first started when a friend of mine invited me on a hiking trip in Oman. Um, to try an experience and it, there, it was a national holiday at the time and I thought I was fit enough what I thought uh, so why not it, it could be fun I went on the trip uh, I was up for a rude awakening I struggled really bad I could not breathe I remember I was even hiding that I couldn't catch my breath I was hiding it. I would go like around the corner and try to breathe, 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 and then come back and not show that I was like really, really struggling. During the trip, I was uh, talking to one of the guides just to explore what other options there are and what other trips that I could do. And he shut me down. He told me, you have weak ankles. I have weak ankles and uh, that I'm not fit enough and I should stick to just glamorous camping trips and glamping. I didn't accept that someone was deciding for me what I can and cannot do and 
uh, it was the first time that I had to apply this motivation towards my personal life. I applied myself. I joined the gym. I worked out five times a week. And for three months straight, every weekend, I would go on a hiking trip. I would choose the hardest trips, the more technical trips. It gave me something that I was missing and I didn't even know that I was missing it. And I enjoyed the trips. It gave me peace of mind. It balanced the stresses that I had from my day job. And I was passionate about it. It came to a certain point where someone said, yeah, but can you do a real mountain? And I took that as a challenge. I'm like, yeah. So I went on training camps. I attempted smaller mountains, smaller summits to overcome my altitude uh, sickness. And I went on Kilimanjaro and I, and I struggled, but I made it. I reached the top. I went on more trips and um, the second more famously known trip was Elbrus in Russia. Going on these trips, I discovered that I'm afraid of falling. I have a fear of heights that I didn't know. And it opened up a new channel of fears that I didn't know existed. The chance uh, that I got to overcome these fears and finish these trips was very much satisfying and it was addicting that I wanted to go on the next one and find out what would be the next fear and then overcome that. And the balance that uh, climbing and hiking gave me uh, with the daily pressures and stresses of work was very much something that I was lacking and was missing and gave me the chance to be really more strategic with my goals and gave me the ability to switch on, switch off this motivating driver that I have uh, and not to overwhelm myself with constantly putting pressure, unnecessary pressure on myself just to succeed and achieve. But just to know that achieving this balance in life is success by itself. And uh, even with facing the latest uh, challenge of my health and beating cancer uh, this past year and what everyone is going through with the world pandemic now, uh, this April 2020, I was the first female head of procurement for the region Middle East for Siemens Energy. Uh, you can do everything. Uh, just go for it, try it, overcome it, find your trigger, find your driver and face your fears. Fears are natural. It's our natural way of protecting ourselves. But the process of overcoming that fear is amazing.